Welcome to another episode of Talking with Kevin and Son, brought to you by RMK Productions and the 10 United Podcast Network. Through the power of story, our mission is to uplift through the voices and share stories and experiences and perspective using the framework of teaching, learning, and modeling. Our purpose is hope, helping other people every day. Today, we have a very special guest. You know, throughout COVID, we learned a lot about ourselves. We found out what child care really is about. We found out the relationship that we were in was either the way we thought it was or something we need to work on. And we also found out the truth about our careers. Is this something we want to do for the rest of our life? Or this is something that is just part of that transition of life. And today we have an expert and we're going to talk about learning the ins and outs of franchises. I have Ms. Tony Wagner. She has spent over 30 years in IT sales as executive manager in corporate sales training. But somehow in the back of her mind, she knew she wanted a little bit more. So I'm going to open the door because she slipped into franchising and then she slipped back into the corporate world. And we're going to let Tony share her story. Welcome to Talking with Kevin and Son, Tony. How you doing? Hi, Kevin. I'm doing well. Thank you so much for this opportunity to speak with you and your audience. Thank you. Thank you for com- coming in. Um, I've heard so much about you. Um, our guest, you're new to, to um, talking with Kevin and Son. We are now doing uh, a series on entrepreneurs, and I've ran into a lot of people that have entered the space of franchising. And I have been looking for someone that was an expert um, on this, that was trusted came highly recommended by a lot of very good people here in the Philadelphia area, and your name kept popping up, so I had to reach out to you. So, Tony, um, let's hear a little bit about how you got into um, uh, franchising and then became a franchise uh, expert. Uh, Let's hear your story. Sure, absolutely. So um, kind of building on what you talked about with my bio, uh, back in 2008 was when I first learned about franchising. I was downsized from corporate and um, through an outplacement service, I attended a meeting and heard about franchising for the very first time. And I was living in Dallas, Texas at the time. And um, the gentleman from this company called FranNet gave the presentation. And I was just amazed to think that I could potentially own my own business through franchised concepts. So I went on that journey and uh, I did buy a franchise back in 2008 that I ran for a couple of years. But I remember saying to my friend that rep at the time, how do I get your job? Because I love what you do. However, at the time, I didn't realize that FranNet was a franchise in itself. Um, I ran my, um, I I had a coaching business. I ran that for a couple of years, Um, but then I did go back into corporate. Uh, They recruited me back and everything that I had learned in running my business really, you know, catapulted my career in corporate. And then fast forward about 10 years, my husband and I were uh, moving to the Philadelphia area. I'm originally from New Jersey, went to school here in Pennsylvania. So it was coming home. And I thought, gee, I wonder who owns the FranNet business in Philadelphia, because I would love to own my to retire and head west where it doesn't snow. And that was a perfect opportunity. And I bought this brand that business. So what makes what makes my job so unique is I am a franchise consultant in my territory here in the greater Philadelphia area. But my friend that is also a franchise. So I am a franchisee. I take my clients through many of the same things that I go through as a franchise owner. So I say I walk the walk and talk the talk, I'm not leading them down something that I haven't done myself. So I've been running my business now for a little over four years. Uh, and I love it. Reaching out to everyone here in my territory, um, I own the greater Philadelphia area, which is all of eastern Pennsylvania, everything east of Harrisburg, down to Philly, uh, the state of Delaware, and southern New Jersey, Cherry Hill, over to Atlantic City, and then down to Cape May. And myself, and I have a couple of associates here, and we work with clients interested in finding out more about franchising and take them through that process as a franchise consultant. 
Now, for, for someone that this word franchising is new to them, because um, because I know a lot of people have, have started their their own businesses, yes. um, be it T-shirts, be it cosmetic, be it hair. But a lot of people are, are looking at establishments as already proven. Mm-hmm. When I make that phone call and I'm not for sure where I want to go. Um, are you the person that's going to kind of guide me and give me some type of information? And what does that first phone call look like? I'm just curious. Sure. Great question. And yes, to all the above, Um, I would say probably 95 of the clients that I speak with say, I want to own a business. I just don't know where to start. And with franchising, it's, it's a proven model. It's, it's something that um, they want to leverage your previous experience and your skills into a new business. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be something that you have experience in. Um, many of the folks that I work with um, have gone into businesses where they don't know that particular business, be it residential cleaning or pest control or um, a, a fitness concept, but they have the business skills that they can then leverage into owning a business. So a franchise is, uh, it's a license to use a trademark products and or services. Um, it with the business plan with, it, it's a system, it's a system of operations, marketing, sales, um, everything that you need to start So um, what about working from home? Are there franchises that can work from home? Absolutely. So the, the big thing about franchising is, you know, I'll have some folks say to me, hey, well, what's the fran- hottest franchise you have? And my answer is always the same. And it's it depends. There are over 3,600 franchise concepts in North America in about 90 different industry codes. And uh, where do you start, right? So there are franchises that scale um, according to, do you want to work from home? Do you want a traditional brick and mortar? Is it more of an industrial setup? Is it something that has a wrapped vehicle or a van? You see a lot of that with the service industry type of businesses. Um, Are you, you know, do you start at home? Do you scale it up? What is it? And what is it that you're looking for? So when clients come to me and say, you know, what, what is, what is the hottest franchise or what's the best franchise for me? That's. First, we're going to talk to you, understand why do you want to go into business? What it is, what is it that you're looking to achieve? We do have an assessment that we've used for over 30 years. And from there, we then go into, um, I spend about an hour to 90 minutes with my clients after this assessment, asking all kinds of questions like, have you ever thought of how many employees that you want? How important is, is, is image and branding? Does it need to be a national brand? What kind of hours do you want? Um, what are your goals for owning this business? What kind of location do you want? Like you said, do you want to work from home? Do you want a traditional brick and mortar in a, in a shopping center type of scenario? Um, do you, uh, you know, how do you, what kind of marketing are you comfortable with, right? Are we going to do, do you want direct? Do you want something that is marketing driven? Do you want something that has a call center? There are so many um, nuances to owning a business. You know, we say it's just not about fast food or French French fries. And that's what I really educate my clients on. And I look at my job as a consultant as education and awareness of the franchise industry. I don't sell franchises, but what we do here at Fran Night, Fran Net, we're over a 32 year old consulting firm here in North America, and we help um, guide clients interested in business ownership through franchise concepts to understand this industry. Um, we talk about for your goals? What are you trying to achieve um, from, a, from a lifestyle perspective? Um, what are you looking at financially? What are your goals there? What kind of business do you want? What do you want to be focus on? 
What are you as that owner, the CEO of your business doing every day? And for everyone, that is a different answer. Is it, you know, what are you looking for uh, a success that maybe you didn't achieve in your corporate life? Is it more flexibility to be home with your family? Is it that you don't want to return to a corporate um, environment and you want to stay closer to your home. You've gotten to know your community more and you want to branch out and serve your community. There's so many different ways of doing this. And so uh, my answer of it depends, really depends on my client and what they're looking for. And then as I take them through this process, first understanding them fully, what are their goals? What are they trying to achieve? And then I work my magic and I match them to, to three or four business concepts that meet those goals that we've discussed. And then I refer them to the franchisors that are in my inventory. I represent at any given time about 260 different franchisors in about 90 different industries. Um, everything from automotive, beauty, healthcare, wellness, fitness, food, uh, pets, education, uh, uh, seasonal businesses, home improvement, essential services, you name it, right? We, we, we run the gamut of that. And then I provide you the tools and the resources that you need along this journey to make the decision that is right for you and your family. It is a process. And it's the beginning of understanding franchising that franchise is a process. It's a system. Same when you're investigating what kind of business is best for you. That's what we're here to help you do. And, and I say, I handhold you all the way through. I'm gonna be here to help answer questions, give you those tools and resources, make those uh, professional references when it comes time to understanding the funding that is best for you. We work with companies around the country, national funding partners that based on your personal financial portfolio will help advise you as the best way for you to finance your business. Um, CPAs, franchise attorneys, whatever you need on this journey, I'm here to provide those references for you and those resources so you can make, you can do your due diligence. It takes time. This isn't something that you call me on a Monday and by Friday, you're buying a business. It doesn't work that way. We want you to take your time, understand, do your due diligence, do the calls that you need to do. We're not going to rush you through this process because this is a big decision to uh, go a new path or try something new. And at the end of it, it's, you know, it does my heart good when my, when my clients are thrilled to start, start their new life or their new venture. And, and I help them do that by matching them to the right business model that they then ahead, that they then go ahead forward with. I, I know with, in being an employee and employer, it's a big jump from being an employee to employer. And you've mentioned earlier, talk about styles and strengths and understanding this. Um, a lot of people have, have made decisions that not going back to work. Um, COVID has pulled the bail off of who your employer really is and how they really feel about you. But going back into Friday, I've had enough. Monday, I call um, Tony and I want to start a business. I am pissed off. Um, where do I where do I begin? Um, is that first phone call for, for you more of a feeler type of phone call getting to know you? Or is it let's just a call to action? Let's get you out of your current position, get you in a, um, into a franchise. How's that first phone call go? Oh, my gosh. Let, let me ask you. This. Yes. Okay. Let, let me ask you this, this again to make sure that first phone call Friday pissed off boss. Uh, I can do it better. We all have these conversations in my hand. I'm tired of every Wednesday having a meeting that goes nowhere. I can do better with my time. Now I want to be the boss and I want to manage and lead people. That first, first phone call, even though it's out of frustration on Friday, you get the phone call on Monday. I have committed that time is changing. I want to detach my um, anchor from your dream and sail away towards mine. Um, I know styles and strengths makes or breaks a, a business. How does that first phone call when I'm about to jump off of one ship and, and sail away on my own, how does that go? Is, is it just a conversation of let's get to know you or do we go full steam ahead? So first phone call is, 
I want to get to know you. I want to understand what what that frustration is. Why business ownership? Um, tell me a little bit more about yourself. Tell me about what you've been doing the last couple of years. What kinds of things do you enjoy doing? And I'm going to tell you a little bit about me, why I'm here, how I can help you. And I always say to my clients, how can I help you? I may, I, I don't have the, it, it's, you're not buying a job when you go into a franchise. Okay. This is an investment. It's an investment of your money, of your time. First call is usually 30 minutes. Tell me about yourself. Why business ownership? How can I help you? What are some of those things that you're looking at? I explain our process and what those next steps are. I always take my clients a step at a time because it can be overwhelming, especially when you're thinking of making a big move like that, leaving corporate, right? Um, what I'm here to do is help you look at what that future looks like. Now, that future can start in as little as a couple of months, um, you know, maybe 10 weeks, but there's a process we want you to go through. So I can't put a time frame on it because I always say to my clients, the time frame is up to you. You're going to drive this, right? But there are certain things that we want to make sure you go through certain steps so that we know, and you know that you're doing your due diligence in investigating what this business looks like before you jump into something else, right? We want to make sure that you are comfortable with your decision. And the only way to do that is to go through the process. So my process is I'm going to have that first call with you. Um, I'm going to send you a follow-up. I'm going to send you, um, I, I recorded a, a one-hour webinar, kind of taking you through Franchising 101, right? There's three ways to go into business. Start a business from scratch. existing business, a resale business of some sort. It can be franchised or non-franchised. Yes. Start from business from scratch because I, I lost a little bit of it. So can we go over from one again? Yes. Three ways to get into business. Start a business from scratch, right? You're usually starting something from a, a passion that you have, might be a, a little slow going, but it, you're starting a business from scratch, right? Whatever that might be. Um, second is buying an existing business. It could be a, a franchise business that's for sale or a non-franchise business that's for sale, right? Um, you're going to uh, invest in a business that um, might already have some cash flow to it or some employees. And I take you through this one hour webinar on the advantages and disadvantages of both. And the third one is buying a franchise. What are the advantages? What are some disadvantages? Again, I want clients to go into this eyes looks like. So that follow-up is my is a one-hour webinar followed by a link to our assessment. That really starts the process is taking this assessment. And based on that, I'm going to understand your leadership styles. I'm going to understand your 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 motivations and answer there's a, a questionnaire there there is also a very quick one page financial overview because different franchisors have different liquidity and investment ranges and i want to make sure that we are conscientiously staying within what you say is is what you are comfortable with investing um and then you know we can help you by putting you in touch with the right financial resources on the best way to fund your franchise but i take this assessment uh, you take this assessment when i get it back i share it with you and then we set up a time and i i spend 90 minutes um, with my clients or however long they need and ask more and more details. I want to really understand you, take you through that. Um, and then once I've gathered that information, then my next step is to go off and match you to franchises. I'm going to check the area that you want to be in. I'm going to match you based on what you said you want in a business. Do you want to work from home, like I said, or do you want you know, is it in a certain industry or a certain, um, you know, what are you doing as that boss every single day? What is that investment range? I want to stay within that range. I want to be very cognizant of that. But then I'm going to go check, make sure that the territory you're looking at is available. Then we get back on a phone call for about another hour. And I tell you about these franchises or these concepts, these brands that I've matched you to at a very high level. And then I ask you to trust me because a lot of times clients will say, I've never, I, I can't imagine myself doing 
X, Y, Z. I'm like, just mm. it's based on the model. It's based on the model, right? Um, please just keep an open mind and trust me and take those first few calls with those franchisors. Um, and then you start that process in speaking with the franchisors directly. They're going to take you through their model. They're going to take you through the, the their uh, franchise disclosure document, and they're going to introduce you to their franchisees in the system, and you're going to get to know them. And I'm there with you every step of the way, um, giving you questions to ask. You've never done this before, right? I'm yep. the expert. So I'm going to give you a list of questions that you should be asking. And I always tell my clients, after a couple of phone calls, you'll become franchise experts as well. But it's a process. It's not a one and done. It's a process because you may hear something and you go, huh, I never thought about that. I'm not sure that I can see myself doing this type of marketing. So maybe I should, you know, look at something else, but I'm always going to give you about three to four options because I want you to look at the different models. The model is so important to, to, to staying in business, right? How do you make money? Where are your clients? How do you get your customers? How do you make money? What are you doing every day? Most of our businesses are what we call that CEO model. You're working on the business, not in the business. You are that business owner, um, but you have that franchise system behind you, right? On, on the products, the services, um, they're helping you every step of the way. That's what a good franchisor does. And we're just going to take what, Tony, I, I thought maybe franchise, but maybe this isn't the right route for me. And that's perfectly fine. I understand that because it's not for everyone. But if you ever had an inclination to say, you know, I really want to go into business for myself, but I just don't know where to start. Franchising might be a great option. So let's just have that conversation. But it may not be. But at least you kind of, you know, going forward. Um, and uh you know, it's it's seeing when those lights go off with my clients, like, OK, I, 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 I see how this could, you know, really uh, fit into my lifestyle and how this could be the right business for me. I had a client recently who said to me he, um, he was uh, recently laid off from his corporate corporate job and he started working with me. And he had that aha moment and um, he was simultaneously looking at at back at corporate jobs as well. And uh, he said to me one day, he says, you know, Tony, because I really thought about this. He goes, I start with a new business, a new company. He says, it's going to take me six to nine months to learn that corporate culture, to understand where my place is in this business, to understand the new product line, how to get things done. He says, I'm going to be working eight to 10 hours a day in the beginning of a new job. He says, but if I look at buying, if I look at investing in this business for myself, he says, as long as I go into it with that same attitude, this is my business. And every day I'm working at it. I'm working my eight to 10 hours. I'm understanding everything I need to understand about this business. And, it, you know, and at the end of that six to nine months, he said, it's mine. I own it, but I'm going to give it the same focus that I've given myself going back into a corporate job to my own business. And I thought that was a, a very good aha moment. Um, it's a franchise, it's a system, but you still got to work at it. It's still, you, you're still a business owner. You still have to work at it. You may not be the one, um, you know, doing the actual service yourself, but you're motivating employees, you're hiring employees, you're running the books, you're running the marketing. You still are working at that job every day. I hope I answered your question. No, you, you, you answered the question. You gave me a, a lot more. And I, and, and I, I really enjoyed that you, you shared an actual experience because um, I wanted to put something on the table of a conversation I, I was just recently shared with me. Uh, coming out of COVID, and I'm going to use this a couple mm -hmm. of times because there's a lot of horror stories and some wonderful stories that have come out of this. But um, personal relationships have, have become very personal and lifestyles ha have changed. So conversation, I want to start a t-shirt business because I want to be able to work home, work at home, um, take care of my child. Um, because, you know, the breadwinner in my family is no longer the breadwinner in my family. Well, I'm going into details. Most people can fill in the blanks. But am I going to spend for this t-shirt business? Is this one of those things that 
financing this is zero dollars down or is it a hundred thousand dollars down how do i get into it because i think the biggest fear for most people is where does the money come from and we know most business starts off with close friends and and family um in the film industry they they tell you to use other people's money you know that's the best in, in investment um, how does that conversation uh, apply to starting a franchise? And let's just use the scenario of starting a t-shirt business and working from home as a single um, female right mm-hmm. now taken care of. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to start that business yourself, non-franchise, right, there's all kinds of resources out there that can help you write up that business plan. What kind of capital do you have? What kind of, um, you know, how are you going to get the inventory? How are you going to print that? And all of that. If you're looking at a franchise that does that, again, I'm going to go back to it depends because some of these t-shirt businesses are brick and mortar, right? We do have a few of those concepts in our inventory and there is an expense to getting into business. The thing with franchising is you know what all those expenses are. That's all declared in that franchise disclosure document, what the investment level is. There is an investment and you do have to come to the table with some of your own capital. Maybe it's 25% to 35%. It depends on the business. You can look at SBA loans to see if you qualify for an SBA loan. So there's ways that you can finance that. And that's where we bring in our financing experts to help you look at that based on your personal portfolio um, of what that looks like. A brick and mortar is obviously going to have a lease tied to it. There's going to be a build out, the the look, the feel, the the trademark of that particular franchised business. So um, it is there isn't a no money down. There is a cash infusion of your own cash into the business. It depends on that type of business, what that overall investment level is, and then how are you going to franchise? How are you going to fund that? Um, there are there's a, a program out there called um, Rollover for Business Startups, where you can use all or part or some of your 401k or your IRA if you've been separated from your company to invest in building a business. Uh, you can look at home equity. You can look at a, a there's variety of ways to look at that liquidity. But to get into a franchise system, there needs to be um, some liquidity that you can get to again stocks, bonds, cash savings, um, home equity, IRA, 401k, um, something like that. You can, you know, if you have business that you want to go into with a family member um, and someone's going to help you on that investment, we want to make sure that they're part of that discussion so they understand what that investment is. And the other thing I also say to folks on that is if you are going to go into business with someone with a business partner, make sure you have some kind of an operating agreement up front on who's doing what and what that looks like to protect all parties involved. Um, you know, I have I have businesses in my inventory, um, you know, that started about maybe about sixty, seventy thousand dollars that go up to several million. It all depends on what you're looking for. What do you? What is your comfort zone in investing? How much capital do, you, capital do you have to invest, and what does that look like? And then as you go through that do that process with the franchisor, you know, talking to franchisees in the system, you'll understand um, more about the workings of that business. Now there are other franchises out there that I you know I believe are, are lower cost. I don't happen to represent any of those, but they are out there. Because remember, there's 3,600 and counting franchises in North America. I only represent a small subsection of that. I, you know, about 250, 260 businesses that, again, span about 90 different industry codes. So, you know, um, and I might have a conversation with someone. And as we talk about, um, you know, how they're going to capital, how, you know, what kind of capital they have. It may, it may be a conversation of um, maybe not now, maybe we can look at what that could look like, you know, in a couple of years from now, and I can put them in touch with other uh, references that I have referral partners to help get them going. I never want to tell somebody I can't help them in one way or another, I'm going to help you. If it's not franchising, um, if it maybe not is this route, maybe it's something out and what else and what are some of those those resources available for you if you want to start your own business, right? Um, 
your, your the SBDCs, the small business um, development centers, um, they can help you score. Um, is a fantastic network of it, uh, senior core of retired executives. They have branches all over the country. There's several of them here in Pennsylvania, uh, South Jersey, and Delaware that, uh, that we work with. So we, we have resources for people. And I do have those conversations on a regular basis. Um, I, I just want to hear what, what, what people are trying to achieve. And if it's something I can help them with, I'm absolutely going to do everything that I can, but I may not be able to, and that's okay, but I'm going to maybe give them some ideas of where else they can look and um, somebody else that might be able to help them. Now, since you put it out there, um, there's probably someone asking, so how do we get in touch with um, Tony Wagner? Can you, um, because I I know some people are probably going into work or coming out of lunch or having breakfast. How do they get in touch with you, Tony? Sure. Uh, it's it's pretty simple. Um, you can either call me directly. My number is 610-314-1781. And to make it even easier for you, I have a, I have a landing page called www.franchisephilly, P-H-I-L-L-Y dot com, if you're in this territory. But if you are listening to this or you have a, a relative or a friend, colleagues across North America can help you. We work local, right? We live in our areas that we represent. So I would suggest going to uh, www.frannet. It's F-R-A-N-N-E-T.com. That's two N's, frannet.com. And in the upper right-hand corner, um, you can see find a consultant, put in your zip code, and it will route you to the consultant in your particular area that can help you. Um, we are, you know, we say we are your local trusted franchise advisors, and we do work in our territories. But any one of my colleagues across North America could be of help to you because we are franchise. We follow the same process. Um, you know, we want to be able to help you. We have all those uh, resources available to us in any part of the U.S. or Canada, and we are here to help you and however we can. Now, before we wrap it up, I, I know there's a couple of questions that I know I want to ask because the hard part about going to any um, into any business is basically the the legalities and the paperwork. Um, with most franchises, and please correct me, there's a document called FDD. That's a franchise disclosure document. Yes. Can you help us with that? Or do I need to hire an attorney to do that? And where do I find an attorney that specializes in franchise? Great question. Yes, the FDD, the franchise disclosure document, is something that your franchisor, that business that you're looking at, will give to you. Um, You go and... uh, there's 23 different sections on that. They answer the questions on their own FDD. I do not help you through um, because it's theirs, right? I don't represent their their statements on there, but I will give you a one pager on what all 23 different sections stand for. I also will give you, and so will my colleagues in your local areas, um, references, referrals to franchise attorneys. And you can review the FDD with the franchise attorney or um, and or the license agreement. We highly recommend talking to a franchise attorney. Um, and there are franchise attorneys out there, right? You, we want to make sure you're going to the folks that specialize in this. Um, we've got, uh, yeah, I have great references here in the Philadelphia area that can take you through that all those legal standpoints. We want you to understand what it is you're signing. We want you to go into this eyes wide open. So absolutely recommend speaking with a franchise attorney and I can make those rep- those referrals for you here in the greater Philadelphia area as my colleagues can around the, around the country. Another question. Yes. Is it possible? Can I try it before I buy it? Can I go work for a franchisee? No, <laughs> I want, is there such a thing? Well, franchisors or franchisees are hiring, right? Depending on what that business is. If you want to go work for a franchisee, whatever that might be, I'm sure they would they would welcome you with open arms. Yes, I mean, you absolutely can. Um, I think people would be very surprised to learn um, what businesses are actually franchised in their areas, right? When you look at a strip mall, if we just want to look at... Um, 
uh, you know, a brick and mortar type of business, which are which are going to be your larger investments, right? Um, if you look at a strip mall, strip mall, I, I'm going to say probably 50% or more are going to be franchised concepts that you may not even have thought of as being franchised. Again, you know, if we look at automotive, beauty, health, wellness, uh, you know, uh, preschool, education, um, pets, home improvement, um, staffing, uh, training. There's so many different businesses out there that are franchised. So I'm sure uh, you can go work for one if you would like to and kind of learn the ins and outs that way as well. I, I'm, a, I'm a big person of quotes. Do you do you have one that um, you you, you kind of hang on, hang on every now and then? Oh my goodness. A big person of quotes. Um, I have to go back to Jeremiah 29 11. <laughs> that is uh, that is my big one. That is for me personally, um, for I know the plans that I have for you, right? And uh, you know, and so that's that's where I go. For me, it's going back to a verse uh, that really helps me on, on, on my everyday. But I, you know, I'm always saving different quotes that I see in, in uh, on Facebook or whatever, saving it to my 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 phone. Um, I saw one today about a leader. Uh, what is a manager versus a leader? And I thought it was very apropos because when you when you are the owner of a of a franchise and you're hiring, you you've got employees. You are a leader. You are not just a manager. You're leading people. You're helping them grow and be the best that they can be. And you know you're owning that business, and that is the reflection of you. Whatever. My business, and at the end of the day. Um, it's how I, I run that business and same with any franchise owner or whether it, it's not even franchising, whether it's just any business that you put your name on, that is your business. That is, you know, who you are and being that leader and whatever that means to you. But how do you help people, anybody that you bring in, the, the customers that you serve, the employees that you have, leading them to be the best that they can be, providing the best service, the best product that you can deliver to your clientele. I, to me, that's what it's all about, being the best that you can be every day and then helping others be their best every day. Yeah. That's what I try and do with my clients, right? If this is the route they choose, if they choose to go, I want to help them in any way that I can. Now, it's Tony, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you, you, you um, can connect it with our purpose, helping other people every day. But we have that one person that's going to be listening to this and mm -hmm. it's going to ask and it's probably going to call you and says, Tony, when do you know when to change channels? I've been working for 20 years for someone. I hate my job, but I love what I, I, I do. You, you did it. You, you, did you it. started a franchise and then you got pulled back into the corporate and you said enough. And I have a similar story. What advice are you going to give to that person that is on the fence? They know what they want to do. What advice would you give them knowing what you went through and what you're doing now and you love what you're doing? So I think what the beauty of this is there's no obligation to either work with me or have that conversation with that franchisor. Um, my services are 100 percent free to our clients. Right. Um, which I love being able to say, and whether you go through me to help you through this process and kind of have that consultant coach with you every step of the way, or you decided to go direct, there's, it doesn't cost you any more, right? So why not work with someone like me? I say, let's go kick the tires together because you won't know unless you know. Sometimes we assume that we know certain things about a business, but until you really start to do that investigation, there's no obligation with time, with money, it's only investment of your time. And if you think that this might be something that you would enjoy, uh, there's been that little voice in your head saying, you need a change, go do something else, go do something else, whatever that might be. I'm going to ask you a lot of questions that help, hopefully bring you some clarity on that. Um, I can't, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I never do. That's none of our jobs to tell you what to do. I'm going to ask some more questions. The end is, you know, you might come to that decision. So I want to help you through that just by being that coach and asking you those right questions. The ultimate decision is yours. But if you're if you're interested, if you think if there's a little spark of anything that came up and said, you know what, 
I've always wanted to investigate something like this, then this is the perfect time. There's no obligation. I always tell my clients, hold on your checkbooks. You are weeks, if not months away from writing a check, right? It's only after you've done your due diligence. This is a big decision. So let's talk about it. And it could be that next career, right? We say is entrepreneurship your next career? Um, and if not, maybe that'll help bring some clarity on what else you might want to do um, if it's not in that current job that you're in. I understand the frustrations that are out there. I talk to clients every day about that. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a good listener as well. You're an excellent speaker. You're an excellent listener. I'm going to share a quote with you. And then okay. I'm going to ask you, um, you know, what, what you want our listeners to take away from this. So to my listeners, I, I want to tell you, it's every single day you're, you're faced with chances and choices, and both of them are followed up with your actions. So remember this, life doesn't have to be perfect to be wonderful. Life is about waiting, not waiting for a storm to pass. It's about learning how to dance in the rain. And when you have freedom of choice, it seems not to be so bad to be caught out in, uh, in the rain. So what do you want our listeners to take away from this? If there has ever been that voice inside or something in your heart that says, man, I would, I've always wanted to own a business or I've thought of owning my business or being my own boss, give me a call. I mean, it's just a conversation. Um, and let's see what we might be able to do together. Um, I'll be honest and open with you. And uh, I always like to meet new friends as well. And either one of myself or one of my associates, we're here to help you. Um, and, and that's why I say, you know, we're here to help. I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm here to help you and, and help be that guide for you. If this is the right, right path for you, it will present itself as such. And how do we reach you again? Uh, phone number is 610-314-1781. Um, you can go to, if you're in the Philly area, go to franchisephilly.com and you can fill out that's it's an easy thing to remember and you can fill out the form and it'll come directly to myself or one of my associates and we'll reach back out to you. And again, if you're not in our listening area or in my territory, go to frannet, F-R-A-N-N-E-T, two N's, frannet.com. It's our, it's our main uh, webpage and up in the upper right hand corner. There's a little button that says, find my consultant, put in your zip code, and it will route you to the consultant uh, here in North America, wherever you might be. But if you're in the greater Philadelphia area, I'd love the opportunity to speak with you. And Fran, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to ask one more question. Yes. Um, your ask, A-S-K. I always ask this of every single guest that comes on talking with Kevin and Son, because we have um, listeners that have a higher call to action. The people that follow RMK Productions and the 10 United Podcast Network or listen to talking with Kevin and Son, they don't just drive by an accident, they stop to help. So if you have that one ask, it doesn't have to be with franchise, it could be saving the world, hunger, or, or whatever the case may be, a vacation spot. What would that one ask, A-S-K, be? kindness. Kindness just comes through. I, it's, it doesn't cost us anything to be kind to one another. I, it's my one ask. Um, just, just smile, smile and be kind. It goes a long way because you don't know what that other person might be going through that day or what they might be feeling and a smile and kindness. Um, you're never too busy to talk to another person and help lift them up because you don't know what they're going through. I, I am actually going to send you a copy of my my book, Sprinkles the True Spirit of Christmas, because awesome. you actually did my synopsis without me even saying, saying <laughs> it, because that's what it's all about. So um, to our listeners, Fran, I mean, not Fran, uh, Tony. You'd be surprised how many people call me Fran. It's okay. <laughs> you know why? Because looking at the back of, of your, I know. <laughs> your, your, your logo says Fran Nett, and all of a sudden you, you get stuck that's in your mind and go, Tony Wagner? No. That's Tony. okay. That's okay. <laughs> So, you know, and that's the nice thing about um, what we do on our, our we do our, our podcast. We don't claim to be um, perfect. We don't overproduce our podcast. We have real conversations. And that's the reason why when I talk to my listeners, we tell them we covered a lot of information. And I'm hoping at some point um, through this episode, 
we've touched you in a certain way. We've lit in a fire under, uh, um, uh, under your butt. And we've opened your, your eyes to, there are other opportunities instead of showing up working on someone else's dreams. You can actually get up every single morning and put those skills that you've that you, you, you've given so freely to someone else. Someone has hired you, you know, to work a 42, uh, 40, 40 hour work week and you put in 62 hours just because you can be doing that for yourself. So I'm hoping that we've educated you. We've enlightened, enlightened you. We've inspired you. We've given you a contact of how um, something can change. If nothing else, give her, give, um, I want to say Fran again, give Tony <laughs> a call and talk with her. You know, it doesn't hurt to explore your options. It doesn't hurt. In the greater Philadelphia area, she has a, a bunch of opportunities and they go from highs to lows. Talk about that. And if you're passionate about something, find a way to, to make a living at it. If you want to work from home, call up Tony. You know, if you want more information about this episode or any other episode of uh, RMK Productions and talking with Kevin, go to our, our website, uh, info is info at rmkproductions.net or go to our YouTube page, RMK Productions and Network. We appreciate, um, Tony, you coming here being our guest. You're welcome back and feel free at any time if someone else is one of these people you should know. Um, feel free to connect them to us. You have an open door to this. Like I said, I'm going to send you a, a copy of my book. You have any closing questions for, for me or comments to our, our, our listener before we exit? I, I just want to thank you, Kevin, for this opportunity and um, to reach your listeners. And like I said, if there's anybody I can help have that conversation, um, if not with me, maybe there's another resource that I can point them to. But I really appreciate the, the mission that you're on as well. So thank you for letting me be a part of this today. And we, we thank you. And to all, all of our loyal fans and listeners, we hope you enjoyed this episode. And Tony Wagner is one of those people you should know. And if you know someone that should be featured and they have a story to tell, please reach out to us. And again, at RMK Productions and Network on our YouTube page or go to info at rmkproductions.net. This is Talking With Son, Kevin and Son. God, I'm screwing up all day long, but that's okay. <laughs> But remember this, use this hashtag, find 1000 reasons to be kind to someone. And as my grandfather always says, and I have to give him credit for everything that I've, I've learned in life, and I repeated everything I thought I wasn't listening to. He says, when you get to a position, you can help someone else. It is your duty to do so. So moments do matter. So turn your turmoil into your triumphs and I'll fade to black. And now we're out. <laughs>